It's an interview you'll only see right here on KCBD News Channel 11. Lubbock Police Chief Greg Stevens sat down with our Shaley Sanders in a one-on-one -on -one interview to talk about some of the changes he's making to the department. You run towards bullets and stay away from them. Greg Stevens joined the Lubbock Police Department in 1992 and worked his way up the ranks, taking on the role as chief in August. The number one job of the department head, the chief, uh, is the culture, is setting the culture. And uh, we've, got a, we've got a cultural issue with, with driving fast to an emergency, which we need to sometimes, uh, but not using our lights and siren. Something captured here on this dash cam video, which shows an officer responding to an emergency call at more than 100 miles per hour without lights and siren. It's not just one or two officers, um, it's, it's across the board. Chief Stevens says he has tweaked the policy. The next step is making sure the right people are held accountable. The problem lies in the commanders and in the supervisors. So really it's not just a policy change that you're enforcing, you're trying to change the culture of the department. I'm not trying to, I am. We're changing it. I'm the first one that's accountable for, for that culture. And I've made that very clear, that it's unacceptable and, th and that we have to fix it. This dash cam video may look familiar. This is from a case in July that sparked an internal affairs investigation. Police say this man, 19-year-old Jose Escarcega, attempted to steal an officer's patrol vehicle, dragging the officer until he crashed the SUV into a utility pole. Sergeant Michael Jordan and Officer Ty Edwards were first on the scene. According to their suspension orders, both used excessive force during the arrest. Now Sergeant Jordan is serving a 30-day unpaid suspension, and Officer Edwards is serving a 16-day unpaid suspension. Stevens took over as chief during that investigation. Why weren't the officers fired in the Escarcega case? The mistakes that were made uh, weren't ones that the solution uh, was to fire them. Uh, they had, uh, the two officers had um, exemplary records with the department, so firing them was not the best answer in this case. Uh, a negotiation of a lengthy and costly suspension was a better answer. Also, you're facing some criticism because of the things that you kind of inherited when you, when you took this position. What keeps you up at night? Um, you know, <clears throat> probably one of the biggest things is the risk of, of an officer getting hurt. Um, that's, that's something that weighs on me. I've really not only accepted but embraced the idea of, of being responsible for that large number of people. It takes strong leadership. It takes the ability to stand up and represent the department through good, through bad. And it's where I, I come up with the phrase of we're going to own everything we do. Chief Stevens mentioned a change in policy when it comes to lights and siren. He says he's also working on other policy changes. He has suspended the rotation policy, which once moved officers out of specialty spots and back into patrol every five years. He says by eliminating that rotation policy, experts are allowed to stay in their respected fields. Abner. Shaley, as we know, Chief Stevens used to serve as a public information officer at the department. Now, did he mention any changes about communication between the department and the media? And that's actually one of the policy changes that is in the works right now. He says in the past it appeared the department was hiding things, not being completely transparent. He says they are working on creating new credentials for reporters that will allow them more access at the police department. Abner. All right. Thank you, Shaley.